First, thank you all for being here. Um, it's much appreciated and a uh, great turnout. Um, whoo, it's been, we won't say how many days. It's been, uh, it's been over five months. Um, we're, uh, uh, we've been through ups and downs, I'd say. Uh, Mark Keith has kind of seen it all. Um, we had uh, one team in the spring. Uh, we had already lost a few guys before I arrived from last year's team. Uh, and then we lost a few more. <laughs> Um, so we ended up with four returners and 13 new. Um, so in the, in the months that, uh, for some of you, I haven't seen you, um, we've got 13 new guys, a uh, whole new staff, uh, not a whole lot of sleep. Um, we've made, um, tough decisions when we needed to, uh, we have, um, we have worked really hard through the spring, through the summer and for sure through this fall. Uh, and I think they, uh, they are trying to find some chemistry now, uh, but we've got, uh, we've got enough, um, enough on this roster to have a nice team to play the way that we want to play. And, uh, and I think the, you know, the faster they can gel, the faster we can find chemistry. Uh, there's a lot of competition, um, but the faster we sort things out, the, the better we'll be. Um, but uh, I am uh, extremely, extremely optimistic on uh, what this team can do and the character and, uh, and the will to win. And I think they could surprise a whole lot of people. Fire away. Question for Coach. Or what's been the biggest challenge? You know, when you're integrating 13 new guys, it's got to be like, are you handing yeah. out uh, Hi, My Name is stickers to everybody in practice? Or like, just, well, what's the challenge been like to try to get, really assemble a whole new team in such a short amount of time? Yeah, I think uh, you, you hit on it. It's just, uh, you know, having them get to know each other, uh, find out if they can coexist, and then learn to like each other, learn to love each other. Uh, we, we, uh, our preseason is really difficult. You, you covered Marquette before. It's very similar. So uh, we've already put them in some fatigued, high-stress situations. And uh, I, I call it, there, there's their bottle. We tip it over, see what comes out, pick it back up. Uh, so you know we, we have kind of forged this thing through fire a little bit. Um, but we're still going. Um, you know, the, the funny thing is, Every day, you know, if you, if you ask me who, who played well today, it's, it's every day there's a new guy. Uh, and uh, so I think sorting this all out, you know, with playing time and, and, uh, and chemistry is going to be the difficult part. Uh, but these guys are working. They're they are really working. We've got high character guys, and, and they're talented. As one of the few returnees, what's it been like? Completely different team to a new one. What's this transition been like for you? Uh, well, I, I can say I'm not used to it. You know, I don't think anybody could be. But it's been it's been pretty smooth having him by my side. You know, um, we've had conversations and the decisions that he made and the staff and all that. And I was just on board with him, whatever he wanted to do. So, you know, when the new guys came in, I just tried to to get to know them as quickly as I could, and you know, just try to find some chemistry and make myself feel comfortable again, you know, having a whole different team last year and then having to come, come together with a new group of guys, you know, it's a, it's a little difficult, but when you have like guys like I got on my team, it's everything comes together easily. What kind of coach is Coach Bart? Uh, he's real laid back and um, he's very encouraging, you know, like he doesn't get on you for making mistakes, it's just correcting you and brings the best out of you, you know, uh, it's real intense loves everything to be chaotic because you know that's how the games are sometimes so when we're going through practice everything has to be like game like and we're flying through stuff and we got to think on the move while we're tired so i think he just brings the best out of you mark keith how big a change is it from what you guys were doing on the floor in terms of the system and what you're doing now was that a huge change uh somewhat yeah like i said uh coach likes to play fast we like to get the ball out and, you know, with the build of our team, we're all athletic and we can all go. So it's about just getting more possessions than the other team, you know, giving our best, giving ourselves the best chance to win. I think last year uh, we played a bit slower, tried to get a little more sets. This year, like, if we can just get it out, play, play intense defense and score up our defense, there's no need to run sets. 
hard to said uh, you didn't want to count. It was about five months. What keeps you? I'm sorry when I say that again. What uh, keeps me? You didn't want to count, but it's been approximately five months, so it kind of seemed like it might be yeah. longer than what you even wanted to admit or whatever. So what keeps you up at night? Yeah. That, uh, <clears throat> um, great question. I, I would say the chemistry piece. You know, these guys, uh, you know, making the right decisions, uh, and, and, and I'm not afraid to make hard decisions, but making sure that we've got the right guys, the right combinations of guys on the floor, uh, making sure that they're, uh, they're doing right. Because you know, I, I was hired not only to, to put a good basketball product out there, but to have good guys to go to class, do what they're supposed to do. Um, so I, I don't think that's different than any other time in my career. But uh, you know the the chemistry piece I think is the would be the biggest thing that I that I worry about. And you know um, you go into a new league, and I've got a little time before we have a little time before we go into a new league. But you don't know what you don't know. You know I've tr tried to start studying the Horizon League and got some non conference before that, obviously. But you don't know what you don't know. So uh, that keeps me up. Yeah, I'm studying the coaches, I'm studying the other players, the systems, you know. It, it's it's real now, <laughs> and that keeps you up. Hey, Mark, you just as one of those guys coming back in terms of coach talking about kind of things, you're going to do since you are, you know, one of those returners. Is there anything you can do on your part to kind of get the chemistry going quicker on the team? Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, like you said, coming back, you know, I'm a little bit more familiar with this place more so than other guys, so, you know, like, Whenever I can, we try to do things off the court together, you know, come in here on our own, work out together, just little things. And, you know, I've been in college for a while now, so I kind of know what it takes like to just to get to understand somebody, you know. The better we understand each other, the better we the better we blend on the court. So, yeah, just like try to do little activities off the court. All that little stuff counts. Yeah, so <clears throat> you're a guy who's been around, I mean, you're, you know, this is different team now in the last four years, something like that. You're from New York. What, what's what's your experience been like, and how excited are you to be here for hopefully a couple years and kind of put some roots down a little bit? Yeah, um, <clears throat> this is this is going to be my home. Um, I knew coming from Hutchinson last year. Um, you know, I went through the recruiting process. Um, you know, I had a few visits when I when I did decide to visit Milwaukee. I had a few visits afterwards. And I canceled them. Um, I knew that this was the place that I wanted to be at. You know, I I, I was 100% bought into you know what Coach Lundy was was expressing and, and the staff and everything he, they believed in. And you know, I I had full faith in the team that that was being brought in. Um, I'm I'm super excited about the guys we have. Um, you know, to piggyback on what Coach Lundy said, I think we have the chance to surprise a lot of people. I think we have the talent, you know, it's just a, a matter of, you know, getting accustomed to one another. You know, we have 13 new guys um, and, you know, stuff like that does take time. So, you know, it's just day by day, you know, sort of getting to learn one another. Um, you know, Marquis says, he said it before, you know, we, we come in and we work out together on our own. You know, we try to spend a lot of time off off the court together and things like that. So, you know, it's just day by day we try to to do anything we can to sort of build chemistry so that you know when we get on the court it's it's you know second nature so but i'm, I'm really excited to be here you know mark had a little bit of familiarity with, with a few guys that came back like him but you're you were jumped in a situation where you like literally knew nobody what, what is that like to, to have to learn faces and learn names and, and in the role that you're going to play on this team too that's pretty important yeah, well, I don't have a problem. You know, I, I've done it before. Um, you know, I, like like you said, I've been a few spots before where you know I'm I'm the new guy, um, but uh, I'm I'm really open. Like you know, when I'm when I'm at a place, that's my family, and and these guys are are are, are my family now. And you know, it's it's just like like I said before, day by day. You know, Keith, <clears throat> me and him, we have a, a great relationship. Like this is my partner in crime. We do everything together. We work out together, eat together, and stuff like that. Um, he hosted my visit, so you know I, I was, <laughs> I didn't know he was a familiar face when I did get here. Um, but again, like you know, we have a, we have some great relationships with with everybody on the on the team. Guys, guys are getting accustomed to one another, getting more comfortable, and and that's going to be incredibly important for not only now, but you know when we're playing in March and things like that. So, you know, it's we have a great group of guys.
Um, regarding a skill set, I think I can I can shoot the ball well. Um, you know, I, I think I do a good job moving without the ball. Um, I uh, pride myself, like when I was at Hutchinson, um, I was used as a primary scorer, but um, prior to Hutchinson, I was more of a, a point guard. Um, I try to do whatever the coach needs me to do. Um, regarding my personality, I'm, I'm very bubbly. Um, I, I love getting everybody involved. I love being an energizer in the room and things like that. Uh, I'm not as funny as Mark Keith, but I, I, I try to be. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I just try to uplift the room as much as I can. I think that's really important, especially, you know, you know, there's times where everybody has a day when they're just not feeling it, you know, so I just try to be a guy who can uplift someone as, as much as possible. Um, and uh, I think that's incredibly important to have on, on a team. So that's that's what I try to be. Coach, you know, first year head coach here, um, all these new players on your team, what expectations have you set or goals that you set for your team this season? None. <laughs> no, we, lit we literally, uh, we we don't we don't really talk that way, uh, you know. Coach speak, but we talk about doing today right and stacking good days, and it's kind of how we've lived since since I got here, and uh, and I think it's paying off now. Um, we have another philosophy that kind of butts heads with that that we want to be our absolute best in March. So, for example, if I'm talking to the strength coach. It's great if they're strong now, but we got to be our strongest in March when it really matters. These guys have to have good chemistry now, but our chemistry has to be the best in March when it really matters. You know, they've got to, he's got to be shooting the ball the best in March when it really matters. They're in great shape now. We can't let that erode and not be in great shape when it really matters. So um, we do look at it that way, but it really is just let's do today right. All right, let's, let's get in the study hall room and and let's uh, let's do our work. Um, you know, we had a scrimmage, and um, guys were scrambling around to make sure they had all their work done for the week, right? Or they weren't <laughs> in the scrimmage. Yeah. So uh, it's just it's doing things right. And in my experience, if you stack enough right days on top of each other, good things happen. So you know, that's really that's really how we're looking at it. And to go back to to these guys, um, you know, we've got a hodgepodge of of personalities, and um, I, I don't know if it's it's me, but I've always been drawn to guys with stories and, and have some, some tough patches in their past. Like the fact that he's on his fourth school is a tragedy of college basketball. He is the nicest kid. He is an excellent player. He should have found a home the very first time. And the fact that we've got him now is um, I wake up every day and pinch myself. Same thing with Mark Keith. You know, they, these guys and a lot of our guys haven't had the easiest road. And, uh, uh, but we have really, really high character guys, and uh, and we're going to be pretty good. But you've been winning 30 games a year. <laughs> Homer, you're late, man. How are you going <laughs> to? Good question's good at any time. <laughs> Say that again, I'm sorry. You've been winning 30 games a year for a number of years. How are yeah. you going to adjust? Unless you're going to win 30 again, I didn't know. I hope so. Um, you know, uh, Rewind whatever nine, ten years. I don't even know how long I was at Queens, but uh, that first year um, I took the job in July, and I think we won fourteen. We went fourteen and thirteen, or fifteen and fourteen, or something. One game over five hundred. Uh, I think this team's better than that. Uh, I really didn't have much uh, time to recruit when I took that job, uh, and I think the next year was only seventeen wins. And then we got, and then we got rolling. Um, so, you know, I don't know when it'll when it'll happen. I know that we'll be fine, better than fine. Don't know when it'll happen, um, but I have a lot of faith in in the guys that we have. Um, if you guys could see them compete against each other every day, um, you feel like yeah, the, these guys got a chance. So we won't put a number on it, but we'll be all right. To the players, what's the weirdest thing about him? <laughs> Thing? Worst oh, or what, weirdest? What is, he, what is he most different than from other coaches you've had? Does he do to you? You want to go first? <laughs> you can go first. I, think so. uh, I don't know. 
I don't. I think this is like I, I. I agree with this guy. It's like the fullest. You know, um, makes me feel very comfortable. So I say like, it's when we're doing drills. Like I said earlier, it's just everything's so chaotic. And like the first day we met him, he told us like, everything's gonna be crazy in practice. Like it's just all over the place. Like when we're doing drills, everything's moving fast. Sometimes you might run into your teammate or whatever. And sometimes I'm just like, man, like, you know, can we clean this up a bit? But prepares you for when, when you can't control, everything can't go your way, you know what I mean? So you got to figure out how to get around it and make it work. Um, I think one thing that has struck me over the last, like, three months is I think he's a, a really good teacher. You know, there's times where guys don't understand, um, and, you know, you know, guys will mess up a drill or guys um, – you know, we'll be in the wrong spot on defense or, or something like that. And, and he does a really good job teaching um, so guys can understand, um, you know. And I think that's that's been very different than, you know, some of the coaches that I've had before. Like, you know, it's like get off the court or, the, you know, you get yelled at and, you know, guys get discouraged. But he does a really good job, you know, teaching you and, you know, making sure that you understand, um, you know, in a way that, you know, you're not discouraged that for, for making a mistake. You know, and I think that's extremely important. Uh, he also makes perhaps the worst dad jokes ever. <laughs> um, and you guys don't get to witness that, but I do. <laughs> but uh, but those two things for sure are, are some things I, I've, I've learned about Coach the last few months. <laughs> Five kids. <laughs> <laughs> Homer, they're still trying to get playing time. Man. You're not getting the real dirty. <laughs> Can you share one of your dad jokes? I mean, okay. Giannis likes to share his dad jokes. Uh, Angela, Angela can give you one. Tell the Giannis one. Yeah. We were at a an event where they had a Giannis jersey that was framed and signed. And um, obviously, like, the, Giannis is the Greek freak. And you can tell that he was thinking about this for time because we were all having a conversation. He was staring at the jersey. And then he said, I wonder if... In Greece, they call Giannis the the native freak, and then he walked out, and then just we all were just like, "No way did he say that," <laughs> because he's native to Greece. It was just whole, uh, just a bad joke, <laughs> but the, it was it was funny though. We were we were dying in there, but he 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 has some some decent dad jokes, some decent ones. Yeah, <laughs> why didn't the skeleton go trick or treating? We had no body to go with. <laughs> Don't encourage him, please. <laughs> All right, give, uh, time for one more question before we uh, can start things up. Yeah. Mind. Um, can, you, can you just talk a little bit about what it means to add um, a couple local guys, like Jose and Ben, and, yeah. and do these guys realize what they accomplished as players uh, here and then in college? Really good players. Yeah. Well, um, obviously, on on the outside, it's you know guys that are native, native <laughs> to Milwaukee, uh, and they uh, and they have automatic recruiting ties, automatic you know connections. Um, but I think if you ask these guys as well, those two are such high character and strong, just good people, good men. Um, and, you know, it goes so far beyond just them being from Milwaukee. And then, you know, first thing we did this, this spring or this fall, uh, I think we were in this room, we put chairs around and everybody goes around and tells their story. And uh, so during that time, the, you know, they got, Ben had just really gotten here. So they learned, they learned about those guys and, you know, their, uh, how Ben used to come and, you know, sit here as a as a boy outside the the rec center or whatever this was back then, uh, and and try to get into UWM to to hoop and uh, that they both came from tough backgrounds in the city and you know became really famous great players and uh, all you got to do is go anywhere in the city with those two and um, you know people people admire and respect them. I'll let you guys answer that too. Yeah, just to uh, piggyback off of what Coach said, like having those conversations and getting to know them and honestly, like what it means for them to be back, you know, 
they grew up and seen this place and watched the, the the guys before them play and they went off to have great careers and then um, for them to be able to coach back at home and you know to see what it means like to like uh, be able to show younger the younger generation and just encourage them because they were once those kids in Milwaukee who wanted to be in our position so you know it gives me a sense of like of what else is bigger than me too as well you know so just playing hard for them and being in Milwaukee and they can give me a different perspective I think that's uh, I think it helps us a lot yeah <clears throat> I mean I think they they covered covered it um I think they were both coach Walker and coach Jose they they were incredible players I think they're incredible coaches but like beyond that I think they're outstanding individuals so you know just to be around outside of basketball you know they're you know I, I'm, a lot of guys are away from home so you know they're an outlet you know they're they're a big brother they're they're a father figure um they're they're all those wrapped up in one and I think that's incredibly important and you know those, those are two guys that you know you want to have relationships with in 40 years you know and that and I think that's incredibly important um and you know that's that's a huge reason why you know I chose to come to UWM was just the relationship aspect of it with with everybody here on staff um you know you get that feeling with everyone that is on staff here and you know they're they're just incredible people so that I think that's really that's really great to have here real quick has there been a favorite off the court bonding moment that you guys can share I have to think about that one. Um, yes, actually, uh, I remember one day. So we had just got out of weights, and you know, word gets around. Uh, we get a message in the group chat, and they're like, um, "Everybody, get their running shoes on. We're gonna go run after weights." So like, we're all just dreading it. We think we're in trouble. People were like they were making up lies, saying it was about study hall. You know, they take us out to this field over by Bradford, by the beach. It was filled, and um, coach like he just walks up. And like he's walking up with a straight face, and then he pulls out like a football. So then like it was like to close off the week too. So instead of like thinking we like instead of having a run, we were out there playing flag football, and I think we had a great time, you know. And that's where it, like it really started. We were out there being competitive still, but uh, yeah, that was probably one of my favorites right there. That that's actually that was gonna be mine. <clears throat> and Coach Lundy, uh, he'll probably hide the film from you guys, but he was like an All American high school quarterback or something, because he was throwing dimes. Uh, and you know, my team, we upperclassmen lost badly. We we lost bad. I was with the younger class. I was the other class. Yeah, so. we my team lost horribly, but uh, yeah, no, that was that was fun because we we got the text message in in weight room and like with, with the weight program we have like we have access to our phones and so like the whole the whole weight session was just low energy we were just like we're gonna run so much <laughs> we, we were driving to Bradford and just guys were just quiet in the car and then like he came up and he was just like so guys are not serious about study hall huh and we're like, oh, this is over. We're we're running so much. He pulled out a football and the guys started celebrating. It was it was really fun. It was really cool. The funniest part is they started telling on before I pulled the ball, <laughs> they started telling on themselves. Keith. I told you it was me. I didn't finish study hall. I didn't get my <laughs> stuff done. Keith, can I just sneak in one? Um, what did you learn from last year? In the trials and the tribulations that I would imagine you hope to be better for because having gone through all that this year? Um, I think for one, you can't take things for granted. That's that's the most that's the biggest thing I learned. But uh, college basketball is hard. It's very professional, and you have to be serious every day when you come into practice and film sessions and all that. And when we talk about chemistry, like you have to bond with your teammates. You, you're the ones out there together, you know. So you really have to click and have a professional approach to this game. Because if not, then you'll get embarrassed every night. And that's what happened to us last year. And uh, I know the feeling. I always tell these guys all the time, like, I've been there before, you don't want that. I don't want it again for myself. So I try to put some fire under our team every day by just trying not to have a repeat of last year, you know? Because we're better than that, and we will be, so. Coach, what are the signs you look for? I mean, we've talked chemistry and gelling. What are the specific things, maybe just through your coaching eyes, that you'll identify as those little landmark moments in the maturation of the whole program? Yeah. 
you know, I think it's it's such a it's such a process to to get a team to play fast. Uh, and I think first is the pace of practice, and you know, over the summer that was that was a struggle to to get them to learn. And then the fall was getting them in great shape because you can't play the way we play if you're not in great shape. Uh, and so you, you get we've got pace of practice now. We've got we've got them in shape. Now it's can we can we eliminate losing? I think that's where we are right now. Can we eliminate the turnovers? Can we take good shots? Can we make sure we give up no defensive transition? So I think that's kind of the phase that we're in now. And you know, once we eliminate losing, uh, then you can then you can start to really hone in on the, the details. You know, your your offense. It's great to talk about plays and all that, but you know, the the guts of the game are where it's won and lost. And uh, you know, teaching guys that have never played together. You know, it, it's important when somebody shoots the ball, we have go gets and get backs, and that's a non negotiable. You know, you got to do your job, and those habits are hard to build. So you know, I think that's where we are right now.